Hi there. I'm Sherry McGregor, author of the Dumb of the Crying series of books for parents of estranged adult children. And today I want to talk to you about getting stuck. And in this case, we're going to talk about the idea of getting stuck striving. So if you found your way here to me and my work, then you probably have an adult child who is either estranged, mentally ill, addicted, abusive to you, perhaps all of those things. And while we can get stuck in all sorts of ways in our lives, parents in these situations often find that they get stuck in a way that's often not talked about, and that is we get stuck striving. It's pretty bad because we end up using all of this energy up in this sort of stuckness, and um, it's over something that we really can't control. And more about that in a minute. But first, on this dreary April day here where I live, where springtime seems to just keep coming forward and then moving back again, I guess it's stuck too somewhere. Are you getting into the spirit of springtime with this feeling of excitement and forward momentum? How are you entering this season of renewal? Are you getting energized for a new beginning? Can you see yourself blooming? Or is it more like you're just dragging out of bed and into the same old ruts? Like maybe, eh, nothing's going to change. Spring may be here, but my estranged daughter isn't going to love me. Still, my estranged son won't bother with me. And no matter how hard I try, you know, the calls, the texts, the trying to reach out, they're just met with silence. Or maybe worse with another round of verbal abuse, but you can't, you can't stop. A good parent would never give up. That's what sometimes relatives tell us. That's what some experts out there tell us with their platitudes about parents taking the high road always. Never mind that your son or daughter is 39, 42, 35, certainly old enough to know how to use their inside voice, to be empathetic to someone else, to even be kind to an aging mother or father. And on a bad day, when you've suffered a, a verbal mudslinging, or maybe you got back the present you sent to your daughter in the mail, returned to sender, maybe you lay in bed that night and you think, no more. The ball is firmly in that person's court now, and you mean it. It's probably about time. But then that familiar voice rings out inside of you. You know, the one that thinks, well, wait, maybe I do deserve this treatment. Who would do this to a good mother or father? And then the ill-defined high road stretches out in front of you again, the route where you told yourself that you wouldn't rest, not until you loved your son or daughter so much that they came back to you, that they came full circle, that they changed their ways, that they became that, that person you, you once admired so much. Maybe you really haven't done enough. Maybe if you write a better letter, one that's worded just right, after all. A good parent can never give up. And so deep down, you know that time is ticking by. You don't know how much longer you're going to be on this earth. And while you dream of spending some of your money and time on yourself, traveling maybe, or maybe you have a big dream to expand your business or take on some new project, or simply finding a few years of peace, that thought that maybe you didn't do enough sends you back to the drawing board. And so then you renew that vow, because that's really what it is. It's a vow that as a parent, I'm gonna do my best to keep proving myself that I keep proving that I really am good. Never mind that when you look back at the photo albums and through the memory banks, you see a loving family, 
a lot of joy, loads of devotion to a child that you you never imagined would grow up to turn on you. And I talk about that scenario in, in this book, In Done With the Crying, the scenario of it's, it's a repeated pattern of trying and getting rebuffed and trying again. First, when something so dreadful as this happens, there's this negative bias that takes place. So you look back on any mistakes you made, and, and we all make them. All parents make mistakes. You look back on those and you magnify them. And because it's so awful, so unimaginable, you feel like everyone is judging you. Like you must be some kind of monster and maybe they're right. And so you get stuck striving. Striving to prove yourself. And really it's to go back to this comfort zone of everything you've ever believed in about family being forever, about what it means to be a family, about unconditional love. You go back to that. And if this sounds like you, I hope that you will get my books. People tell me that they really help them. This is not to say that those values are wrong or bad, but we can look at them in new ways. We can think about whether they're really helpful with something so dreadful as, as estrangement or an abuse of adult child. And I know how it all feels. I know the pain of having a child who I once saw the moon and stars in that kid. And he took this lonely detour away from the family. But being forever sad or on some hamster wheel of trying to prove that you're you're good, it only keeps you preoccupied and stuck. Stuck striving. And taking your care of yourself, it, it doesn't mean you have to give up hope or even quit trying to reconnect if, if that's what you want to do. But you can do all of that in sensible ways that honor you, that help you keep your integrity and your self-respect. So yes, do get my books. They will help you put the situation in perspective to see the situation for what it is and to renew yourself, spring or any season. And if you would like to work directly with me, reach out as a life coach. That's one of the things that I do is help to remind people who they are and help them to get themselves centered again focus so that they can remember they are good, capable people. Not the failure that someone else has tried to make them out to be. Becoming aware and working to move beyond those inner limitations that are deeply wired into us from growing up in a different era, one where family was forever. Becoming aware of those and working to get free of them really frees you to work better, to play better, and really losing the stress of that that we sometimes put on ourselves makes us function better because it's a fact that stress messes with our intellect and our ability to perform. So while we can't make someone else change, we can change. We can learn to grow and break free of limitations that chain us. You still have things to do in the world. I know you do. Work to create, things to build, to make a difference, to make someone laugh, to bring joy or breath to the vast experience for positive change, whether that's on a worldwide scale or just on an individual basis, one-to-one, -one, because individuals make a difference individually. And then when you make a difference, someone else that you've been with makes a difference somewhere else. And it's this beautiful chain of wisdom and love instead of the unconscious chains that weight you and hurt you and keep you bound. So I hope if you haven't yet subscribed, you'll hit the subscribe button. So you'll be notified of my next YouTube video. And I want to say thank you again.
because it, it's because of all your nice kindness and, and your subscribes that I'm doing this again. And at the very least, sign up for the newsletter. I'll put all the information down below. Um, you can sign up at my website and rejectedparents.net. It's free. The newsletter is free. And it will keep you informed of any new articles that I write at the website. And I'm planning some really fun stuff, exciting events and programs for the near future. And, and those will be announced in the newsletter. So I don't want you to miss out. So sign up, okay? And for now, I just want you to know that I uh, appreciate you so much. And Take kind care of yourself. All right. I'll see you next time. Bye.